Greetings, everyone. This is Mr. Ma, and in this podcast, I'm going to do an intro to the determination of the empirical formula of a compound lab. And so um, the purpose of this lab is going to be to determine the empirical formula for magnesium chloride, which I'm going to create by um, taking some magnesium. We're going to be um, reacting it with some hydrochloric acid, um, a little over one molar. And when those react, we're going to have a reaction that produces magnesium chloride and in order to see that um, it's going to be aqueous so I need to evaporate off all of the of the acid um, and then it's going to leave some magnesium chloride compound which we're going to do some quantitative analysis with to figure out what the empirical formula is so I'm just going to talk through the procedure point out some um, some differences in the procedure and some key things to keep in mind so that you can come in to the lab block day and be ready to rock um, so the first thing that you have to do is uh, get a clean, dry beaker. I'll have some of these available. Um, so it's clean, it's dry, it's ready to go. Um, and instead of the 150 or 250 milliliter, I'm going to need you to grab a 400 milliliter um, for this experiment because it's going gonna, it's gonna to make it easier to evaporate everything with that wider surface area for the, um, the particles to evaporate. Um, so. You're going to be taking this and you're going to be measuring a piece of masking tape, putting your name on it, and you're going to want to make sure that you leave this masking tape on the, 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 um, the beaker because it's going to become a part of the mass. Um, and so once it's labeled, uh, I'm going to very carefully record the mass with a triple beam balance. Um, I'm going to obviously calibrate it first. This thing goes out to the thousandth plate of precision. So all your answers are going to end in point, you know, out to the thousand place can be either a five or a zero. An example would be, you know, one point zero zero five. Um, we're going to go out to that level of precision, and you're going to record that in a data table. You're also going to need to very carefully record the the mass of the magnesium strip. Um, so in order to do this, before you get the mass, I, I'm going to want you to use some steel wool to try to clean it up a little bit. Um, Magnesium actually reacts with oxygen in the air to form magnesium oxide, so there's kind of some corrosion on the outside there. Um, you're going to want to try to use some steel wool a couple of times to try to get it as smooth as you can. Um, and so once I've kind of smoothed it off, got some of the product of that oxidation reaction off, I'm going to take the mass very precisely, again, in the triple beam balance and record that in my data table. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our magnesium ribbon directly into our beaker and we're going to pour um, approximately 50 milliliters, but definitely no more than, and I would say even having a little bit less would probably be a better option of the hydrochloric acid, which is about one molar. Um, and you're going to record your observations in a data table. Um, and I, I would start with a little bit lower, like maybe start with 30 um, rather than starting with 50. And then as you swirl it, you're going to make some observations and you're going to slowly add a little bit more to the beaker. Um, and this is going to take several minutes, but you're going to, for the reaction to take place, because it's got to eat through all that magnesium, um, but you're definitely never going to go above 50 ml for the, for the volume. So you're, you're really adding really small amounts of HCl um, until that magnesium strips dissolved. And if you have any more than 50 ml, it's not going to evaporate in time. And so um, you're going to go ahead and uh, while you're waiting for that to dissolve, um, after it dissolves, excuse me, you're going to take that labeled beaker and you're going to put it in a hot plate under the fume hood and it should be completely dissolved by this point. If it's got just a little bit left, um, as it's heating up, it'll probably be able to dissolve the rest of it. Um, but it really needs to be pretty much completely dissolved by that point. And, and then while it's heating, you'll be able to come back to your lab station and most likely do the pre-lab questions while you wait. Um, once all of the liquid is evaporated off, you're going to go get the beaker. Um, you're going to bring your trivet and your hot plate, and I'm going to give you the, this hot beaker. You're going to take back to um, your desk, and you're going to let it cool for just a, a couple minutes, maybe a minute or two, and you're going to take the mass of the, of the beaker and now the evaporated, or the um, magnesium chloride compound that's left in there. Um, and you're going to record this very carefully in your data table. Um, so we put that on there. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is um, you're going to get a ring stand and you're going to be using your Bunsen burner to, to heat up the rest of your um, solution to get off all of the water that might still be in there. 
Um, so you're going to get your Bunsen burner, and you're going to gently heat the, the beaker and its contents for about three minutes. Um, so you're going to get your Bunsen burner out, you're going to set up the ring stand and all that good stuff, and you don't want the flame to be... Um, so I'm just going to use kind of my example here. So here's just a paper towel here. The tip of the, the, tip of the inner cone is, is going to be the edge of that paper towel. Um, and so for the flame here, we're going to gently heat it. I'm going to lay off a little bit. Okay, the flame's going to be a little bit lower. We're gently heating. We don't want anything to splatter out. Um, we don't want to heat it too, too quickly or too intensely. Otherwise, some of our compound could actually leave and spray right out of there. Um, so after you, you read dentist for three minutes, you're going to, um, if it starts to pop or anything, you're going to pull it out, obviously. But the idea is that you're doing it gently enough so that it's not shooting out um, and you're losing mass of your, of your product. Then you're going to remove the beaker carefully from the stand. Um, you're going to allow it to cool to the touch. And then you're going to measure the mass of the beaker and the contents and record it in your data table again. Um, and so you're going to re repeat those steps um, heating it, weighing it, heating it, cooling it, weighing it, heating it, cooling it, weighing it, until you notice that the mass is not changing or going down anymore by more than 0 0.05 grams. Um, so that means you, you're basically getting all the water off and, it, and you're making sure that it's, it's staying off. Now you've got to be a little bit careful because if you heat it too vigorously, sometimes magnesium chloride can actually decompose into, into chlorine gas and, and, um, and so that's going to obviously be losing some of that so you, you want to do it gently, um, but as long as you heated it all off, it's not going to differ by 0 0.05 grams. You're going to record that stable mass, uh, and then you're going to wash the, the contents of the beaker um, with soap and water. You're going to scrub in the sink, and there'll be some scrubs over there with, uh, with some soapy water to get out all the chunks that were left, and it can go right down the drain. Um, and then you're going to take the tape off your beaker if it didn't get baked on, um, and then you're going to clean up and, and wash your hands. Um, as you get to the post lab questions, just to give you a couple hints, for the calculations, uh, you're going to need to make sure you're, you're using significant figures. Um, AP expects you to be able to, to do significant figures plus or minus, um, plus or minus one sig fig from what it should be. So if it's supposed to be 0 0.05 and you put 0 0.050 and you have an extra sig fig or you have one less sig fig, you're not going to lose credit for that. But if you um, you know, have more than one sig fig off, I'm going to be taking points off for sig figs. And so show all your work with units and all numbers. Show units canceling for any conversion type problems. Um, and then just any work that make all of your work explicit, whatever you're doing. Um, and then in the post lab analysis questions, there's a couple on there. Um, the second question has you use a, a formula for um, percent dif difference. So this is the percent difference formula here. Um, so this year. So the percent difference formula is a way to compare an experimental value to a value that you should have gotten. So in this experiment, there's a, a ratio of magnesium to chloride in a compound um, that you should get. And so based on what we learned about charges and that kind of thing, and that should be two to one, two chlorines for every one magnesium. So that ratio is 2 to 1, which is 2. Um, and so the actual is going to be what you, what your experiment and your analysis predicted. Um, and that's going to be some ratio. Let's say it's you know 3 to 5 or something. Um, you're just going to take 3 divided by 5, and you're going to get some decimal, or 5 divided by 3, um, and get some decimal. And you're gonna, that's going to be your experimental, or your actual uh, ratio between those two of chlorine to magnesium. And so you divide that by what it should be to, and you're going to get a percentage, which I want you just to round to one decimal place. Um, the third question on the post-lab analysis is going to have um, a discussion on error. And I'm going to spend a lot of time on Friday talking about error. I'm also going to post some hints online if you want to get started for number three. Um, some things to keep in mind. But you'll have some time on Friday to work on that question after we have a, an in-class discussion about it. So this has been a breakdown of what you're going to do for the lab. I hope that this has been helpful, and we'll see you guys uh, in here for the lab.